Hello, my name is Leo from TL Lab. Welcome to a new episode of Popular Science. In this part we'll speak about vacuum. Vacuum is space devoid of matter, completely empty space. However, it is impossible to achieve perfect vacuum in lab condition because there is always some matter around us which is impossible to completely remove from vacuum. Therefore, we get very low vacuum. Now I'm going to show you a few experiments with vacuum regarding how certain things behave in vacuum. Firstly, we'll show behavior of sound waves in vacuum. For this we'll use electric doorbell. Now hear how it sounds. When I press bell button, you see gray in light, which is indicator that bell is ringing. When it's air in chamber, you will also hear ringing. After I vacuum the chamber, you will just see green light and will not hear ringing until I let air back into chamber with air valve. Now it can't be heard anymore. Why? Because we removed air from vacuum chamber. Sound is longitudinal wave which goes through some media. In our case that media is air. Sound can't expand if there is no air. Now we let air to go in and listen again. Now the sound can be heard normally, as at the beginning because of that we bring air and enable the sound to expand. Now you will see example of air circulation. In this example we'll use ventilator. Ventilator is device which with its propeller rotation blows the air. Here we have a ventilator and a flag. I connected this ventilator to accumulator. Now you can see how it blows. You can see the flag waving less than at the beginning. Flag has stopped to wave, but the ventilator is still blowing. Why did it happen? Because we removed all air from vacuum chamber and ventilator hasn't air to blow anymore. It rotates but isn't blowing. There isn't any air in its propellers. The flag isn't moving also because there isn't any air to blow in. Now we we'll let air back in chamber and see what will happen. Uh, will flag start to flag uh, to wave again or not?
we can see the, that flag is waving again because we get the air in and a ventilator has air to blow in flag again. In this experiment you will see expanding of air enclosed in balloon. We put a balloon with small amount of air in vacuum chamber and observe what will happen with the balloon. Air particles are moving inside the balloon. We can see increasing of balloon volume because we are draining air from vacuum chamber out and gives space for air from balloon to expand. In standard conditions we have atmospheric pressure of about one bar. That is air pressure which does pressure on us. But we have here lower pressure and lower and lower. Now I will get the air into chamber. It can be seen that air volume in the balloon has decreased and returned to primary volume since the air has got in and since pressure returned to the amount of atmospheric pressure. Now you will see influence of air pressure on water. To begin with boiling an egg. We all know how to boil an egg. We put it into water and boil it for about 5 minutes on 100 degrees of Celsius, which is temperature when water starts to boil in standard conditions. By standard conditions we mean normal atmospheric pressure of 1 bar and room temperature of about 20 degrees of Celsius. It is interesting that on big heights in high mountains water boils at lower temperature. How is that possible? It is scientifically proven that it in Peruvian Andes at the altitude of about 6000 meters water boils on 93 degrees of Celsius. At that altitude is lower atmospheric pressure and because of that water molecules can move, move more freely and pop up as water vapor already on 93 degrees of Celsius. According to that, water will boil and egg will cook, but it will take more time, about 10 minutes. Now we'll see what will happen with water in vacuum, space without any air pressure on about 25 degrees of Celsius. We can see that water is boiling. It isn't big vacuum, but it boils because with vacuuming air, pressure is decreasing and water has lower boiling point, just as at high altitudes on high mountains, but in this example much, much lower. We can still see water boiling, that air by bubbles coming from all the parts from the glass. Now I, I enabled air to get in the chamber. I can feel that glass is cold. Despite the fact that water boiled it even decreased its temperature. If we keep it longer in the vacuum it can be possible to freeze. Water cooled because it needed energy to boil. We aren't heating it, so it is using its own energy to boil. Condensed water can also be seen as when we boil an egg. Therefore, water vapor we've got from water boiling condensed on the glass wall.
Again, one interesting experiment with air expanding. Here we have marshmallows. They are soft and spongy. They are spongy because they have air within their cells. Because of that, we can press it and after press, they return in about primary volume. What do you think, what will happen to them in vacuum? We can see that marshmallows are growing. They are increasing their volume because of removing air from the vacuum chamber and decreasing air pressure. Now we can see marshmallows stop growing because they reached their biggest possible volume when some air bubbles started to pop and air started to go out of candies. Now we can get air in to see what will happen with marshmallows. Now I open the air valve and let air into the chamber. What will happen to them? They shrank and become sm smaller than at the beginning because of the atmospheric pressure that press air out of them. One more example of air expanding. Shaving gel is filled with air or some other gas. Here we have a plate and shaving gel. Put it later in plate. Here it is. Now you can maybe suppose what will happen to them in vacuum chamber. It is expanding very quickly because we are removing air and decreasing air pressure. Now we can let air in. It can be seen that gel heap from shortly before shrank and scattered everywhere in chamber. That happened because atmospheric pressure pressed gel again. Now you'll see a few experiments you can do at home. First and most important, safety goggles on. And for some experiments you'll need safety gloves. For this experiment we need a salad bowl with water, little bit of water, aluminum can and a, ha and a handle. Firstly, we put little bit of water in aluminum can. Put it on the stove. And put the fire on. Now we need wait to water boil. After that, we'll take the can and quickly put it into water and see what will happen. Now the water boiled and we'll quickly put here.
For this experiment you'll need a bottle, a piece of paper and an egg. First fire the paper and put it into bottle. Now take egg and put it on the top. And that's that. For this experiment you will need salad bowl filled with water, a bottle and little bit of water and microwave oven. First put little bit of water into bottle. Now we'll put this bottle into microwave oven for 70 seconds on 640 watts. For taking bottle out of the microwave oven you'll need also safety gloves. Now the bottle and water are heating and after some time water will start to boil. Put the bottle out and quickly put here into water. For this experiment you need plate with colored water, we colored water with food color, a glass and a candle. Fire the candle, put it in the middle of plate and put the glass on it. We get little vacuum which sucks some water from plate in into the glass. 